Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 famous historic figures who suffered horrifying diseases. Sometimes history is gross, really gross, especially where diseases are concerned. We've all heard of the nasty stuff that the past could serve up for our ancestors. What we might not know is just how many famous historic figures got walloped with these awful diseases. From the utterly weird to the utterly terrifying to the simply disgusting, it turns out being famous in the olden times was nothing more than one long string of disgusting incidents. Number 10. Edgar Allan Poe Died of Rabies The death of Edgar Allan Poe in 1849 has long been a freaky source of mystery. After vanishing for nearly a week after leaving his home in Richmond, Virginia, the poet finally turned up lying in a gutter in Baltimore, wearing someone else's clothes and nearly incoherent. Poe then spent four days suffering extreme hallucinations before spiraling into a madness and dying. At the time, the cause of his death and the circumstances surrounding it were considered a total mystery. We still don't know for absolute certain what killed him, as that would require DNA testing, but in 1996, Dr. R. Michael Benitez was participating in a conference where medical practitioners were given an anonymous patient and a list of symptoms and asked to diagnose them. Unbeknownst to him, Benitez was given Poe. The specialist doctor took one look at the anonymous patient's file and declared it a clear case of rabies. In the 19th century, rabies was extremely common. It now seems likely that Poe was bitten by a rabid animal and succumbed to the horrifying disease before he could tell anyone. While the theory isn't 100% watertight, Poe showed no signs of hydrophobia, which is a common symptom of rabies, it may well be the closest we ever get to solving this aptly ghoulish mystery. Number 9. Beethoven was born with syphilis One of our favorite pieces of trivia is that Beethoven, the legendary composer who wrote some of the best music in history, was deaf. From the mid-1790s, he was affected by a buzzing noise in his ears. By the age of 30, he was losing his hearing badly. Many of his greatest works were written after that time. One tidbit often gets left out of this story, though. A few years ago, the University of Maryland's annual Historical Clinicopathology Conference decided to look at what might have caused Beethoven's deafness. Although the passage of time has made it impossible to say for certain, they did come up with one candidate they thought extremely likely, and that's syphilis. One symptom of syphilis can be deafness, and syphilis was common back in Beethoven's time. It's thought that his father had it, which may go some way toward explaining how Beethoven got infected. Like HIV, syphilis can be passed from mother to child in the womb. If Beethoven's dad had infected his mum, it's almost certain that that's where the composer's ear-destroying STI came from. Number 8. Tutankhamun looks like an inbred yokel. Scientists have produced images of King Tutankhamun showing that he had a club foot and a hangover on his teeth. Today, it's widely known that inbreeding is a bad idea. Aside from being totally gross, getting jiggy with your sister can result in a child suffering truly awful disabilities. In ancient Egypt, though, they hadn't quite figured that out yet. Royals thought inbreeding would help keep their line pure. Instead, it resulted in pharaohs who looked like inbred yokels, one of whom was the legendary Tutankhamun. King Tut came from a long line of inbreds, and boy did it show. In the words of the Wall Street Journal, King Tut had anterior incisors and an overbite, buck teeth, a cleft palate, curvature of the spine, a club foot, and a grossly elongated head. He also had feminine breasts and hips, as did several of his male predecessors. Almost certainly, there were other undetected defects of vital organs. In other words, this ancient king looks less like some great and powerful ruler, and more like the sort of guy you might see looking for work as an extra in the remake of Deliverance. Number 7. Samuel Johnson probably had Tourette syndrome. Samuel Johnson was one of the wittiest writers of his time. A coarse, vulgar beast of a man, he palled around with guys like Jonathan Swift while redefining what the English language was capable of. He was also pretty odd. Contemporary accounts report that he liked to make weird-ass noises while sitting in polite company and had a compulsive habit of rubbing his knee while talking. On the streets, he was prone to gesticulating wildly at nothing. Do these symptoms sound familiar? Well, they might to you. Although Dr. Johnson's tics caused hilarity at the time, modern doctors have posthumously diagnosed him with Tourette's syndrome. While the most common depiction is of people shouting out swear words, plenty of sufferers are simply stuck making nervous twitches and involuntary noises. Dr. Johnson was evidently one such sufferer. He used to cluck like a hen, shake his head wildly, and whistle uncontrollably. It got so bad that gangs of children would follow him down the street, pointing and laughing. Number 6. H.P. Lovecraft's Weird Cold Aversion 
horror maestro H.P. Lovecraft was one peculiar dude. For one thing, he was a lifelong anti-Semite who absentmindedly managed to marry a Jewish woman. For another, he was obsessed with the dangers of interbreeding in a way that went beyond bog-standard racism and into a pathological fear. But perhaps the weirdest of all might be his strange aversion to the cold. If the temperature ever dropped too low, Lovecraft was apt to collapse into a dead faint from which he couldn't be woken until he warmed up again. Interestingly, we still have no idea what caused this. It seemed to come on in the writer's adulthood and wasn't triggered by any one thing. Some have linked it to his frequent migraines, while others have suggested it was psychological. Lovecraft himself seemed to think that it was the cancer that eventually killed him that caused the problem. At any rate, it made him develop an extreme paranoia about the cold, a paranoia that filtered through into some of his stories, like the gruesome cool air. Number 5. Darwin's whole life was one big pukathon. About a year after his long voyage on the Beagle, Charles Darwin developed a bizarre condition that would haunt him for the rest of his life. About three hours after eating, he would get extreme abdominal pains, followed by hideous nausea. Moments later, he would expel everything in a great big vomitathon that left him utterly exhausted. At some points in his life, the condition got so bad that he was basically rendered an invalid. The freakiest part of all, though, is that we still don't know what caused it. Although all Darwin's friends thought he was a hypochondriac, modern doctors have subsequently diagnosed him with cyclical vomiting syndrome, or CVS. The problem is, we're still not really sure what causes this. Although he could get an accurate diagnosis if he was alive today, even in 2017, it's unlikely that his doctors would be able to do anything to help. People speculate that it may have been related to his time at sea, but no one really knows for sure. Number 4. Julius Caesar had endless strokes you may have heard before that Julius Caesar had epilepsy. Certainly, that's what people have thought for centuries. When you take into account his symptoms, such as collapsing into fits, it definitely sounds plausible. But a recent study from 2015 has another idea. According to the authors, there's a good chance Caesar suffered a catastrophic series of mini-strokes. The technical name for these is a series of transient ischemic attacks, but it amounts to the same thing. Rather than suffering the same illness as people like Graham Greene and Ian Curtis, the ruler of Rome may have had a series of debilitating strokes. If that's the case, it's perhaps lucky for Caesar's posterity that he got assassinated when he did. A proper stroke could have left him utterly incapacitated and at the mercy of his enemies, a far worse fate than the quick, brutal stabbing that ultimately felled him. Number 3. Lenin's brain was turning to stone. When he finally died, the infamous revolutionary Vladimir Lenin was only 53 years old. His death came on the tail end of a series of strokes, and shortly after, he was placed into Stalin's personal care. At the time, nobody knew what the heck was wrong with him. First Russian doctors suspected mental exhaustion, then lead poisoning, but finally they just rolled with syphilis on the basis that seemingly everybody in the olden days had the dreaded French disease. It wasn't until they performed an autopsy on the dead communist that they uncovered the horrifying truth. Lenin's brain had slowly been turning to stone. The technical name for this condition was cerebrovascular atherosclerosis, and it's as creepy as hell. Basically, calcium deposits build up in the cerebral arteries to the point that they become nearly solid. When the morticians tapped the affected areas with tweezers, they made a sound like stone. Creepily, this wasn't a case of 1920s man running up against something he didn't understand and being helpless in the face of it. Even today, someone with Lenin's condition would be unlikely to live much longer than he did. Number 2. Akhenaten probably suffered a hormone disorder The Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten likely came from the same line that produced the yokel-like Tutankhamun. With that in mind, you'd probably expect to find that he had some weird stuff going on. And you would be absolutely right. Akhenaten suffered the same elongated head as his more famous descendant. But Akhenaten had also some strange gripes that were all his own. In 2009, professor of dermatology and an expert on visual diagnosis at the Yale University School of Medicine, Erwin Braverman, came up with his own theory. Akhenaten was probably suffering a hormone disorder that made his male body look like it belonged to a woman. In ancient drawings, Akhenaten is often depicted as having wide hips, a narrow waist, and feminine breasts. Yet, we know for sure that the ancient ruler was male. It sounds like someone made a mistake until you realize that the extreme inbreeding could have left him with a hormone imbalance. Specifically, this was the overproduction of an enzyme called aromatase that could have caused his body to be flooded with estrogen from an early age. This would explain how a guy who was meant to be male could wind up looking so spectacularly female in ancient engravings. However, since we are yet to find his mummy, we can't say for certain that this is the case. 
Number 1. King Herod had some of the nastiest ailments in history. Herod the Great was an overachieving king who, among other things, built the largest artificial harbor in the Mediterranean. Today, though, he's mainly remembered for ordering the slaughter of the innocents in an attempt to kill baby Jesus, something many now think never actually happened. Apparently, though, God did not get the memo. When it came time to shove Herod off this mortal coil, he did it in the nastiest way possible. According to the ancient writer Flavius Josephus, who lived about a hundred years after Herod died, the king had a fever, though not a raging fever, an intolerable itching of the whole skin, continuous pains in the intestines, tumors of the feet, as in dropsy, inflammation of the abdomen, and gangrene of the privy parts. He also suffered convulsions of the limbs and had foul, fetid breath that could strip paint. But the real awful bit was contained in those last five words, gangrene of the privy parts. Herod's junk was so awash with bacteria that it literally began dying while it was still attached to him. Today we know this as Fournier's gangrene, and it's basically one of the most painful, disgusting ways you can possibly die. Except this isn't actually what killed Herod, just likely a final and extremely painful complication. In fact, it's now thought that chronic kidney disease did the biblical king in. And that may be so, but it's the image of his decaying wang falling apart as his flesh is eaten away that's really going to stick with us. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.